Word Defibrillator for today, where we're going to trust God for a word from within the Word. And what is He actually trying to tell us? Not necessarily even the people of the time, even though we take it into that context. We want to know, Lord, what is it that you want to say to us this morning, specifically just here and now at this moment in time? And it's Isaiah 28, verse 10. For it is His prophets repeating over and over, precept upon precept, Precept upon precept, rule upon rule, rule upon rule, here a little, there a little. Now, it's just, it does sound that it is a bit monotonous, eh? It does indeed. Precept upon precept, and I mean, who even knows what that means? And does it really make an impact on people's lives when you're just hearing rule upon rule? Sometimes as children, and maybe even God's children, is like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he actually um, repeats it, saying precept upon precept, precept upon precept, and then rule upon rule, rule upon rule. It's like, come on. And I mean, why even bother? But it's actually quite amazing when you think about it. So what is a precept in the first place? Uh, let me just go precept. Okay, precept is kind of a law, a, um, it's a standard, it's a way of doing things. And sometimes, yeah, when you're getting laws, I know I don't, um, I don't know how you feel when you go through um, school and that and people are saying this is what you have to do. The thing that I don't enjoy in life is where people come to me and they go, um, this is what you need to do. And I say, oh, really? Don't you love it when people say drive safely? Don't you want to say to them, huh, I will uh, do whatever I want to and I'll drive the way I want to. Why must I do what you say? It's not an easy one. But let's go and see what he's trying to say to us. No, but the Lord will teach the rebels in a more humiliating way by men with stammering, stammering lips and another tongue. He speak to his people, says Isaiah, and teach them his lessons. To these complaining Jews, the Lord say, had said, this is the true rest, the way to true comfort and happiness. What? So if you want to know what the true rest is and the true way of, of to comfort is and happiness, here it sits. If you are seeking for happiness this morning, this is what Isaiah says in 28 verse 12. He says, this is the true refreshing, yet they would not listen to his teaching. So what is it? Well, this is the true rest, the way to true comfort and happiness that you shall give to the weary. Yeah, unfortunately, that's where it stops. No great and wonderful wow to that one. So if somebody is weary, somebody is tired, is give to them. Give them something to eat. Give them some rest. Make sure they're comfortable. Help them replenish. And it says, and this is the true refreshing. This is how you'll refresh yourself. Yet they would not listen to his teaching. Verse 13, therefore the word of the Lord will be to them merely monotonous repeatings of, and here we go again, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, rule upon rule, rule upon rule, here a little, there a little that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Whew. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Ah. I have had those times, and I just want to pray for you this morning because I know there are people who are listening that the word of God, his precepts are just blah, blah, blah. Yes, I've heard it before. Thank you very, very much for that word. But it doesn't mean anything to me. It does not help where I am in my life today. A precept being a command or a principle. And it's intended especially as a general rule of action. And it's just, you know, if you're going to do this, this is how you do it. One of the simple ones is, Lord, how is it that you are not going to reveal yourself to others, but you're going to reveal yourself to us? John 
uh, 30, uh, John 20, 14, 21, where he says, but if you have my commandments and you walk in them, you have, if you have my precepts and you walk in them, you will show, you that, show me that you love me. And by showing me that you love me, the Father will see that you love me and he will love you also, that you, you can be clearly seen. We can be clearly seen by you. You will see us with your own eyes. And I do at times when you sit and you get all, all this multimedia coming your way from all the different groups on, that you're on and people send these sayings and these clips and these rehashed songs with these little um, Jesus loves you. It does get tiring and laborious. And it becomes just so blah, blah, blah. Do you feel that way? Well, it shouldn't. And if it does, I want to just give you a little hint. You're tired because your emotional tank is totally empty. You have been doing it for the world around you. Speaking to somebody last night, they were telling me, it just feels like I'm being constantly chased by something. That I need to get things done. I need to. They must happen. And I said, you know, if you never did anything for the next week, what has to be done? Is your life threatened? Is somebody going to go without food? Is the world coming to an end? Do you have a lack of finances? Is there lack of provision? And there was no to all these questions. Then shouldn't you just take a deep breath and maybe this could be the moment where you give back to you. Maybe this is the moment where you need the filling because when the word of God becomes Blah, blah, blah. Just another rule, just another instruction upon another instruction. For me, that's just a sad moment. Just a sad moment. I said to my wife, I said, if you could have a perfect day tomorrow, what would it be? She said, just to spend the day in the Word. Just to spend the day seeking God's face and getting precept upon precept, rule upon rule that will bring revelation and edification and excitement to my soul. You see, that's supposed to be the result. The Word of God is supposed to get you to a place where you just want more and more and more. And I know that people have not preached the Word the way they're supposed to. Because it's supposed to make you feel excited. Sometimes it's going to convict you. And you're going to know that you've made a mistake, but you're going to want to build. You're going to want to learn His Word. So it's time to just kind of maybe fill your heart a little. Heavenly Father, I pray for rest. I pray that we can make an appointment with ourselves and take time out. Maybe just an hour and a half. Just make an appointment. Go find a nice place that you could just be quiet. Take something to drink. You don't necessarily even have to pray. You just have to sit and allow God to minister to your heart. Father, I pray for a setting free. Father, I pray for anybody who's sitting and saying, oh, it's just another law, it's just another something to try and get right, and I just can't get life right. Father, I pray for a release of that person right here, right now. Father, I pray that he who the Son sets free is truly free indeed. You're free. Look behind you, the, the door is open. Go and receive that life of abundance that Jesus has given you. Just lay it all down. Just maybe walk away for a moment and take a deep breath and see it from a different perspective. And Father, I pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding to God, their hearts and their mind in Christ Jesus. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to walk away. This is a new day. It's a new day to start again. I thank you for that refreshing now in Jesus' name. Amen.